Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. This time, we're going to be doing something uh, a little bit of a different format because, well, I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter. So, I'm going to experiment with not having the webcam section at the uh, start of the video and see how we go. Also, this is pre-recorded footage and I'm doing post-commentary, which is something that I may or may not be doing more going forward. So, today we are looking at Time Splitters 2, which, funny enough, is the second Time Splitters game. Now, these games are, at least the first game is actually quite difficult to play these days unless you're going to be playing it through emulation because of course it only came out on the original PlayStation 2. However, Time Splitters 2 and Time Splitters 2 Future Perfect are backwards compatible and enhanced in 4K60 on the Series X, which is really, really cool. Um, I'll let the intro play. And there we have it. We actually have like a proper intro this time around. We actually have 10 fairly fully fleshed out uh, missions in this game, which uh, was a massive improvement over the first game. Now, like the original game as well, we have three different uh, difficulties. So this is the first level, 1990 Siberia, Obelisk Dam. A secret research facility under a Siberian dam has unearthed preserved organic specimens which are over 10,000 years old. Following a number of mysterious accidents, the original scientific team has left the site and Russian military garrison has been assigned to the excavation point. Intelligence has revealed that the military's attempts to develop biological weaponry from the finds have had dreadful results. They must not be allowed to continue this research. Although biohazard cleanup forces are on the way, there is an opportunity to investigate the base and destroy the samples and research records before they arrive. The base is currently under lock down. The perimeter guards are jumpy and the automated security system has been engaged. Avoid the cameras if necessary. They can be switched off or destroyed. Cutting off the communications uplink will buy you some time. So we can see this portal here is very much a Stargate reference. There is a lot of references in this game. And one thing we can see pretty much straight off the bat is just how refined the game looks. Gunshots. They're killing 
Sinners if they find out. Come on, coward. Nikolai, the light. Stupid torch. Does nothing in his army work. It's all down to me now. So we actually have finally um, proper voice acting in the game as well with absolutely superb music. So the reason they originally went with a time travel kind of base for the storyline was so they can mix up different locations, different time periods and just throw loads of interesting levels together and they can just use the time traveling mechanic as a bit of a a bit of a thin glue to tie everything together and they actually specifically used that just so they could have more fun with the game um, and mix up the themes and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of an interesting wrapper, I think, for a uh, time traveling kind of story. It, it worked, you know. And this game has such an incredible um, amount of polish compared to the first game. The first game really did just feel like an extended demo. Whereas with this game, it is a full complete experience that is absolutely jammed with combat. Now, one thing that you will absolutely recognize as I'm playing this, the controls. Oh, man, if you haven't played this game since uh, it originally dropped all those years ago, you are going to struggle with the controls. They are, I don't, I don't want to say the controls are terrible, but they are so alien um, in how this game plays and feels compared to what we're used to these days. This game has a huge reliance on auto-aim and finicky manual uh, aiming as well by going into that um, cursor aiming mode. Uh, and that cursor aiming mode has such a bizarre dead zone um, and it's it's so finicky like you just tap the analog stick and it flies and twitches across the screen it's something that i was getting used to towards the end of this um you know quick revisit but <laughs> man and just trying to select a gun again as well um you know which almost got us body bagged by this guy uh, so anyway, we finally get, you know, it's kind of back on track with the mission. And we're playing as Cortez. Uh, we have been thrown back to 1990 to try and um, deal with these time splitters who are trying to destroy humanity by going back and erasing key points out of humanity's past or something. <laughs> so somehow, by following them back through their warp gate, uh, we we end up in these weird situations um, where we are, you know, basically body snatching other characters from history. And it's kind of an interesting concept. Now, doing some exploration on this level, like we are doing here, you can see that we're finding filing cabinets and stuff like that. Um, these are objectives, but as I said um, in the beginning... This game actually has three difficulty levels, like the original. And um, like the original, depending on the difficulty of the level, the level changes. It gets a little bit bigger, it gets harder, there's more enemies, and um, they throw more objectives at you, and they're much tougher. 
Also, another nice big boon is the levels actually feel like proper well thought out levels instead of just, you know, something that's been slapped together in Unity. Obviously, this game predates Unity and all that stuff, but that's, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just like a quick acidy flip feeling game. It's an actual proper mission with a, a you know, a start point, a proper end point. Um, and there's actually checkpoints as well. Uh, unlike having to completely restart the level if we die, they're not generous. <laughs> they're not generous at all. In fact, there is only one checkpoint in this mission, and it's kind of in the halfway point. Uh, and if you, yeah, if you die at any point, I mean, we get a very unfortunate ending <laughs> on this mission. Kind of cheesy, and it does set you back a decent chunk. But, you know, it, it was a step in the right direction. Now, the weapons in this game still feel really good and fun to use. There's that satisfying feedback when you actually shoot enemies, uh, which, you know, speaks volumes to their animation system. It almost feels like it has a ragdoll physics system to the characters, even though it doesn't. Um, you know, uh, it, they... <sighs> This game was very much ahead of its time, and it does look incredibly nice on the uh, Xbox Series X, and it runs like butter as well, which is fantastic. So as I said, there's 10 levels, and they are very unique as well. Um, <clears throat> they are incredibly diverse, from going back into like the, I think it's like the 1700s or 1600s, all the way up into the year, you know, 20... I think it's like 2450 or something. So you get some primitive crossbow style weapons and bricks and rocks to throw at enemies, uh, all the way up to like laser guns and rail guns and things like that. Now you can see I'm having some trouble with the controls here, like really suffering with the controls. Um, but the good news is with this particular game, you can actually manually remap and fiddle with every single button on the controller to how you like it. And that was very rare. Um, you know, it's only now with this generation of game console where you can actually do that in the operating system of the, the console itself. You know, this was not common at all at the time, um, which is a nice feature. And I think if I was ever gonna get into this game and play it again, I would have to spend a lot of time with the controls. But, you know, that's the way these old games are, I suppose. Now, you can see from, like, the weapon models, like, how detailed they are now. And, uh, you know, I love watching the handgun slide come back and seeing the brass come out. No proper reload animations. It still feels very much like Goldeneye. But it, that will get fixed in the next game. Unfortunately, um, Siphon, uh, Siphon Filter, um, Time Splitters 3, unfortunately, did not do very well at all. And this one is definitely the fan favourite. It's going to be interesting to visit the third one. Now, I like this level in, in particular because it does feel like it was ripped straight out of, uh, say, Perfect Dark or 007. Um... You know, it really does have that feel, and especially with the music as well. Which is kind of apt, because this was a continuation of, like, the, the Golden Eye and the Perfect Dark sort of engine and system. Because Perfect Dark was supposed to be another James Bond game, um, you know, set in the future, from what I can understand. But for some reason, Rare couldn't get the license again. So it became Perfect Dark. Instead of wasting all the development, they, they spun it into their own thing. Which apparently is coming back on Xbox, which is nice. Now again, with this AK, uh, we have alternate fire with some of the weapons as well, which you'll see. This gun actually has a grenade launcher attached, and quite a few of the weapons have alt fires, which again, wasn't exactly common at the time. And here we go back into the controls again because I'm trying to work out how to just fire the gun and not the grenades. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's a hell of a mess. 
Um, but, you know, we're lucky. We're very lucky to have this game backwards compatible. Uh, and it actually arrived, if memory serves, in the last wave of backwards compatible titles. Now, also, uh, with this backwards compatible version, when it actually released, there were a few problems with the controls. Uh, they were slightly too sensitive. And what I thought was quite cool is the community actually had um, a bit of a backlash when this game came out and they were complaining. They said, you know, it's fantastic that it's now backwards compatible. We can put our discs in and play the game. But the controls are really sensitive. It's really impossible to play. And to Microsoft's credit, they actually went back into the backwards compatible files and they actually changed all the dead zones and fixed the control inputs, which... Yeah, they, they certainly went above and beyond with this game. Now, like I said, um, this game has a huge amount of content, and we are going to be looking at some more of that uh, a little bit further down the road. But what I uh, also think is kind of cute is every character model that we come into contact with, like the female guard we just shot there, she's called Lieutenant Frost, I believe, Every character model actually has their own stats, their own stamina, their own accuracy, all that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, they're all characters that you can unlock and play, which, again, is really nice. And there she is again, Lieutenant Frost, giving her a bullet to the back of the head. Not our finest moment. And there, I think that's her again. I can't remember what the guy's called. I think he's called, like, Nikolai. Um, <laughs> and an awful a bit of um, <sighs> bit of stealth action there, getting spotted by pretty much every single ca uh, camera going. Uh, unfortunately, every time you set the cameras off, I think that just spawns a load of enemies, and they're pretty liberal with their grenades. The enemies are very aggressive, and they do kind of spawn out of everywhere as well so you know if you alert the enemies you're gonna have a bad time especially on um, normal difficulty because let's not you know mince words here the normal difficulty is a heck of a challenge there are no health kits there's no way of getting your health back you can pick up a, a few a literal handful of armored vests but they don't give you a lot of health. So this game is not easy. And I'm pretty sure if you play it on the hard difficulty, um, there is no... This is quite a cool little thing here if we play with the grenades. Yeah, there is no armored vests on the hard difficulty. You know, the health you start the level with, that's all you have. And I was absolutely mesmerized as a kid being able to, like, destroy the watermelons. Now, these alarms are annoying as well. The enemies will push those, which, yep, you're going to have a bad time. There's no one in the shower, which I thought was unusual. I vividly remember them being enemies in the shower. It's possible they are on the harder difficulty because me and my uh, partner at the time... We really played the hell out of this. And uh, this was like, you know, our college, well, after college evening uh, and weekend kind of game for at least what felt like a couple of years. You know, we'd all sit around, smoke shit tons of weed, drink almost lethal quantities of alcohol in my friend's shed on his little 14-inch uh, high branded CRT TV and we would just play this four player constantly this and Halo 2 um, good times man and I think loads of people of my generation have a similar kind of story with this game but you can see how long the levels are as well and uh, like I say what a transition from the first game to the second these actually feel like proper levels multiple objectives and they actually all have their own unique kind of story thread um it's nice to have a little bit of interactivity with the environment you can now blow up boxes you can shoot computers and you can also 
ruin objectives. Like if you destroy the wrong computer, for instance, you can completely balk the level. Uh, and if you're not sure what you're doing, if you haven't played it for a while, or you haven't um, you know, played it at all, yeah, that's kind of frustrating. So anyway, we finally fought ourselves like all the way under. And there's a Gatling gun staring at us. And it sounds like Gabby's come home. So I may have to pause this video in a minute. So we need a system disk. Now, if you get stuck on what you're supposed to do, you actually have like a little portable mapping system in this game. And it does sort of loosely point you towards um, your objective and things like that, which is kind of essential, especially when you're playing this game for the first time, because it can be extremely cryptic. The levels are long, some of them are mazy, and uh, you don't get much direction on what to do. Essentially a case of exploring everywhere and looking everywhere. And this shotgun, I used to be absolutely mesmerized with it, with the animation. Now, we're going to get ambushed here by zombies, quite a few zombies. Uh, like the original game, the only way to kill a zombie is to uh, shoot its head, clean off its shoulders. But the zombies have quite a far-reaching... Yeah, like that. <laughs> a really far-reaching attack, which is savage. And they can push you into corners as well, which you need to be careful of. And you cannot push past them. If they push you into a corner, you have to defeat them to get through them. And again, you have to shoot the heads. Uh, otherwise, you can fire a grenade at them and kill yourself, which, again, you're going to have a bad time. Now, there is a flamethrower hidden behind those lasers there. A bit of um, foreboding uh, <laughs> for, for later. Yes, that ended, that basically ended our career. So anyway, with the disc, we can actually continue exploring. Hey. So using the disc opens up these sealed blast doors into the deep mines below, which you can see are absolutely stuffed with zombies. But that's not a problem. When they're coming at you one or two at a time, not an issue. Now, this flamethrower is a double-edged sword, big time, because you can very easily set yourself on fire with it. And once you're on fire, there's only one way to put yourself out, and that is with water. If you can't find any water, well, <laughs> you're dead. And as you can see, we set ourselves on fire. Um, and I spent ages uh, like thinking to myself and like trying different things, different combinations of buttons to try and work out how to put myself out. And then I realized, you can't. If you get set on fire and there's no water around, game over, man. Game over. So I was hoping that I could quickly grab the time crystal and finish the level. But alas, we're not done yet. So here's the mysterious like containment thing with the weird time splitter inside, which somehow is creating zombies. I think the story for this level is they found a time splitter buried deep below and they're experimenting, trying to create super soldiers. And of course, that created zombies because of course it did. Yeah, these special forces guys, they don't play around. And uh, instead of the zombies now, we've got the mutants, which are a lot tougher. Oh, we also have zombies as well, apparently. Now, the Time Splitters, which became like the main enemy of the series, actually started off and we succumbed to the fire. 
Yeah, the time split has actually started off as just like a MacGuffin enemy, just an enemy to, you know, have as a bit of a story um, to loosely tie everything together. So what they actually did in the original game, they just used a generic like zombie monster as the time splitter, which is why they look the way they do. So anyway, that was a look at the actual story. So this game is also completely packed with challenge mode. And there is a whole bunch of challenges, all different challenges, um, which you can take turns whilst getting drunk, trying to get the high score and unlocking all the medals. Uh, and this is like a good example of one of the challenges. We have to smash all the windows in the level as fast as we can. Basically anything longer than a minute is a fail. And these are crazy fast paced, kind of like party game stuff. And uh, I remember untold amounts of hours that we, we spent in college trying to get all of the gold medals. And I actually think, I actually think there's a platinum reward, although that might be in the third game. It's uh, like a, the game doesn't tell you about it, but there is actually a platinum reward you can get. So we got bronze because of course we did. And the next uh, level in this set is called Breaking It. After Private Paulie's incident with a grenade yesterday, all ammunition has been confiscated until further notice. <laughs> and we're playing as Lieutenant Frost. But this time it's the same mission, except we are armed with bricks. Unfortunately, bricks don't explode, but they do have an alt fire, which I forgot about. So the standard fire, she kind of just tosses them lightly and the uh, alt fire, she throws them quite far. Wish I'd remembered that. So this game um, has so many references and parodies to popular media of the time. It's got like Star Wars references. You've got Matrix references. And, they reference Terminator, James Bond, obviously. Um, Neo Tokyo is based on the anime uh, Akira, apparently. Uh, and there is actually a level called Aztec, which I'd forgotten about, but that is actually based on a GoldenEye level, which is quite nice. This game also is absolutely packed with Easter eggs, um, especially to do with the unlockable characters and cheats. Now what's interesting, ah, stain removal. The life of a zombie would be far more pleasant if it weren't for the hunchback. Yes. Now this is one of the levels that I could never get gold on. I can't remember if my ex at the time could, but this was really difficult. Now the grenade launcher has a standard fire, which kind of is quite short range. And then it has the alt fire, which fires like a rocket propelled grenade, which has much further range. But yeah, this level is was ridiculously difficult to get gold on. Absolutely savage. So yeah, this one of the um, bonuses for this level, I think, is in the arcade mode. Uh, with all these, yeah, it's the actual arcade mode from what I can remember. It has the entire original game's campaign in, which I thought was a nice fun little uh, addition to the game because I, I suppose that the original game was such a basic little thing um, you know they just threw it in for the lols with the new engine the new animations and the new characters so if you've got time splitters 2 you don't really need time splitters 1 I mean, it's not quite the same. It doesn't have all the content from the first game, but there you go. It even says there, Time Split is original story, which is cool. Now, this was one of my favorite um, of the challenges, and this is all about scoring points, shooting off zombies' heads. Um, and lo and behold <laughs> to me, we actually get the best score here. But we actually survive for quite some time. Apart from on the first try, where I forget if you actually leave the zone, you die. 
This game, well, this mode actually reminds me of Call of Duty Zombies, at least the very early ones. It is wave-based. You've just got to survive against the zombie horde. And of course, remember, you can only shoot their heads off. Well, I mean, you can shoot their arms off as well, but apart from giving you a paltry amount of uh, extra points, it doesn't do much. Perfect. Now, what makes these levels really challenging is as the waves go up, you get extra zombies to deal with, which is one thing, but you cannot leave this area. Even those steps right in front of us, that staircase, if you stand on that, you get the three second countdown timer. And that's where the, the majority of the challenge comes in, trying to kite and herd these zombies around. And remember, it's all about being accurate and quickly. And quickly, accurate and quick. But it is addictive and it is fun. But you can see, you know, how much potential there would be in a new Time Splitters game these days. If this was on Xbox Live Arcade or, you know, PlayStation Network or Steam or something like that, this would be, I think it would get quite popular with the streaming community. I really do. So what's also interesting is um, this game has in one of the elite um, challenge modes is called something like it's something to the effect of sincere flattery or, or something I can't remember exactly what it was called um, sincerest form of flattery that was it um, and it actually is a collection of game modes that just directly. Um, references rival first person shooter games of the time including like you know like Medal of Honor, uh, Half-Life, that sort of thing. And sadly I didn't show them off in this video because there just isn't enough time. But um, yeah they really went all out free radical. They really did try and get this game on the map and get it to stick. But sadly as I said in the in the first video with Time Splitters 1, I genuinely think this game just came out a generation too early. It was so far ahead of its time. Alright. Now I'm not sure actually if there is a platinum trophy or if I am just thinking of the third game. Or maybe I just completely made it up. I don't know because we need to get 20,000 points on this level to actually get the gold medal and well we smash that because as you can see although the zombies are you know kind of giving us a bit of a kick in they don't actually do that much damage to us on this level I think that does change in later on challenges, but then it sort of balances out by the fact that we get, you know, better shotguns and just better weapons in general. So this game was also um, compatible with the LAN port on the original Xbox. So you could daisy chain, I think it was like up to four Xboxes together and you could have like up to 16 player death matches which again was insane um, I don't think that was an option on the PlayStation 2 version or the GameCube version I might be wrong about that but I have a feeling that was unique to Xbox Live or not Xbox Live but the original Xbox But yeah, this one has uh, definitely gone down in the Hall of Fame as one of the legendary, uh, most well-regarded first-person shooters of the generation um, that it launched in. And going back and playing it now, yeah, it was certainly a time where, you know, they, it, it felt like they just went out of their way to make a complete, compelling package for the money 
and the primary objective with this game, of course it was to sell units, but the primary objective was to make the most fun and entertaining game that they possibly could. I think they excelled. They absolutely excelled. Yeah, we're getting, like, we're getting really swamped here. Now, if you notice as well, the zombies can actually kill themselves, which does help you, but you don't get any points for that. And you only have a finite amount of ammo as well. I believe the shotgun respawns in the middle of the room. It's, it's either at the start of every wave or it's on a cooldown timer. And your wave completion bonus, I believe, is on how quickly you uh, clear the wave out. And the less damage you take, the more points you get. So that's uh, always, you know, what you want to try and aim for. But yeah, that's easier said than done. Now, I wish I'd played um, a couple more levels, but we just didn't have time to be honest. Uh, I didn't expect to survive here as long as I did. Um, but I am curious to see if the other levels are this cramped in this tight quarters. I honestly can't remember. I mean, I think there are some levels that are maybe like a little bit thinner, but they have more kind of wiggle room in. They have more choke points. But again, I could just be completely misremembering that, which I wouldn't be surprised. So I think we get to about wave 13, something like that, by which time we'd completely smashed. Now, I think that's kind of, that's one thing I, I would probably change. Um, I think if you actually hit the top score, you can unlock the top reward, maybe it should end. But then I suppose, obviously, being the arcade style game, people are going to want to keep playing. Um, you know, people are going to be competitive, everyone's going to want to try and get the top score and outdo all of your mates, so I guess there's, you know, that kind of uh, aspect to it. Now, I believe this game also um, spawned the popular game mode, Virus. I think it was called Virus in this. In Halo, it's called something else, I think. Um, where you could actually infect the other players, and you had to be the last player surviving, or the last player infected. Kind of like a game of tag. And I think um, as that became one of the most popular Halo 3 um game modes of all time. I don't think it was in Halo 2, but that originated from this game. And of course, the map editor is back with a vengeance, which is always fun. And it was massively enhanced in this game. You could make entire missions. And I'm, I can't remember if you could actually script events yeah, as you can see, you can just get like swamped by enemies and you can't move through them. And if you're reloading at the time, you're kind of buggered. But that's okay. Yeah, 22,000 for gold and we're already on 24,000. And we still got lead in the pencil yet. At least, I think we've still got a little bit of lead in the pencil. Are we going to get to the next round? I think so. Yep. It was at this point in the video where I, <laughs> when I was playing this, I was like, shall I just shall I just take a bath? Shall I just phone it in? Because um, I kind of want to see how long I can go on for. But at the same time, uh, this video is getting long. Would have been nice to possibly get a little bit of zombie variety as well. But like I said, each particular character has its own strength and stats. And maybe it, these are the weakest zombies. I'm not 100% sure. That might have been why. Uh, this is possibly bad. Nope, we're all right. We're good. We're golden. Oh, oh, oh. 
Almost. Almost. I can hear the bells toll. This is not going well. The Sandman is calling. Literally have like the smallest amount of health left. Oh, no, we actually did make it to the next wave. I'm impressing myself. That doesn't happen often. Oh, yeah, we basically ran out of ammo there as well, I think. We don't have a lot left in the tank at all. 11 cartridges. And the gun hasn't respawned yet. Yep, I think we just used pretty much all of our ammo. So we actually got 31,000. It's like 11,000 points more than we needed. But yeah, we unlocked uh, a sewer zombie for our trouble. So I guess, you know, things aren't all that bad. And the last thing we have here is the arcade mode, which is just essentially a bot match. But it is a ridiculously fun bot match. There's just something about these uh, weapons that are just so satisfying and kinetic. And, you know, with the feedback of the enemies, it's great. And there's such a ridiculous variety of weapons as well. And they all sound good. They feel good. Also, peep the fountain in the middle. Yeah, that's going to be important for a certain lethal weapon a bit later on. So we only actually have to get 10 kills here to come first. But I think it's safe to say, you know, even from going back, even with the control problems, which they are difficult. They really are difficult um, to reacclimatize to, which I was kind of getting there towards the end of this session. This game absolutely deserves its reputation as, you know, the king of its, the shooters of its time. Especially for, like, multiplayer. It just, it couldn't really be beaten. It was only, like, when Halo 2 kind of kicked out on its prime um, and really got going. And then, obviously, you know, when we moved over to the next generation with the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox um, 360. Sadly, this game and this series was left behind. And it is a shame. Now you can see just how small the maps are as well. They're not all tiny like this, but... They're not exactly massive either. Anyway, guys, that about does it. Let me know what you think of this sort of format with the post commentary. And I hope the mic sounds better as well. So that is a quick look at Time Splitters 2. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.